Welcome back. This is the second game of the second league. This is a very interesting starting hand. So without the black mana, normally I would mulligan that. But because I can see three sleep cursed fairies here, I'm quite sure I'm going to keep it. Because when I play the island, I still can play the Muta Vault in the next turn. So I'm not missing out on land drops here. And the chances are high that I'm going to draw black mana within the first three turns, let's say. So it should be possible to work around the mana problem here. Well, the only problem I see with hands like this is uh, they are very aggressive, but don't have many interaction. For the interaction, we need the black mana, so if we are playing against something really aggressive here, this hand can definitely stumble. Well, here is another great thing about the Sleep Cursed Fairy. Even if I don't draw interaction or something like that, I can still use the mana to untap her, so my mana isn't really lost in that case. Well, let's see, it's definitely worth a keep in my opinion. Looks like the opponent had a mulligan to six. And we are of course starting with a Sleep Ghost Fairy. The opponent is starting with a Watery Grave into Thoughtseize. So I'm definitely playing a mirror match here. <laughs> And here is the swamp we need. Interesting decision of the opponent to take away the fairy fencing and not the shield red. In this case, another dual land would have been great. But I'm still quite sure Motorwald into Sleep Cursed Fairy is the best call here. Okay, Ledger Schroeder is a really bad uh, card for me. I guess that's why they have taken the fairy fencing. Uh, this also means we are playing against uh, Phoenix. We are just not seeing any red mana here. Yeah, the scent would have been much better with interaction. I don't think the Sleep Crust Fairies are going to make it against the Ledger Shredder. If he can manage to conniff just once, um, they have a 2-4, and that's nothing our fairies can blow through anymore. Also, Rankle won't be able to fly around that ledger shredder. And they hit another phoenix with a sleight of hand. Well, also that ledger shredder is now a 2-4. Looks like this game is over soon. At least uh, another black mana, but Rankle isn't able to do anything here, so let's go for Shealdred. She's our alternate win condition at this point. And she gets instantly killed. Yeah. <coughs> Shouldred would have been too great. Because uh, our opponent is always drawing cards with this deck. Yeah, Ledger Shredder is really a problem for the fairies. 
because um, he is getting too big to uh, easily be hit by a fairy fence. So this is one of the cards uh, where we need fatal push. Another land isn't going to help here. So yeah, at this point I can concede. Even if I would be able to kill the Ledra Shredder here, um, the Arclight Phoenix would be able to block the fairies all day long. And the opponent still has five cards in hand, so I'm not going to be able to blow through that. They will get their phoenixes back every turn, so yeah. Now this is what you should see. Uh, mouse pointer not moving, because I'm grabbing my sideboard guide and looking into what am I going to do against Phoenix. Okay, so the plan is to board in, of course, for Leyline of the Void. Leyline of the Void would at least handle the Phoenixes. I am also boarding into Mystical Dispute, for example, to win counter wars uh, against spell peers, and also to counter stuff like the Ledger Shredder or Thing in the Ice. And out go two Thoughtseize and two Fairy Dream Thief and also two Brossen Borrower. But I'm still thinking about the Brossen Borrowers. They can still bring a Phoenix back to their hand or something like that. So maybe in the future I'm going to board out Picklock Prankster. Also Dumping Sphere sounds really interesting because the opponent wants to play multiple spells in one turn. But I feel like it does not have the impact like, for example, Leyline of the Void has. So if I resolve a Leyline of the Void and have a Dumping Sphere on my hand, it would be a dead card. And this is a great hand. This is all we need. We have the Sleep Cursed Fairy turn 1, we have Interaction in the form of Fatal Push, uh, Spell Stutter, Mystical Dispute, this is great. Sleep Cursed Fairy is the obvious turn 1 play here. And the opponent is starting with Thoughtseize again, but this time we have quite the Thoughtseize proof hand. If the opponent does nothing, of course we untap the sleep curse end of turn. And this is where I think about untapping the sleep cursed fairy, attacking and not keeping mana open for the spell stutter. But this is obviously not a great idea. Let's just pass the turn. This time there is no need to untap the sleep curse. <laughs> and we draw the mana for Rinke. Well, I can, but should I?
I don't know exactly what the opponent could have. And I feel like Rankle could run into a counter spell or something like that. So it feels like I should uh, leave the mana open for spell stutter. Well, and they push the Sleep Crest Fairy. Sometimes fear is a bad advisor. I should have just played uh, Rankle and attacked with b both of them. Okay, while in this situation um, countering the fatal push is the right move, it's still a bad move not to make the opponent pay the ward cost before countering the fatal push. So remember that this is a misplay. Picklock Prankster, Sleight of Hand, this time I'm definitely going for Rankle. I don't know a single spell that would change the situation that would come for one black mana, so just do it. Rankle. The only bad thing about this play is I don't have mana open for counter spells, so the opponent can do whatever he wants in his next turn. But it's also true that the more time the opponent gets, the more certain the opponent will find his phoenixes. Ledger Shredder, of course. And he's killing the Rinkle. Good thing I have the Fatal Push. Also, Bitter Triumph is a nice card. I do like it. Especially if you can discard a Phoenix into it. Yeah, let's fatal push the ledger shredder. And this is a tough spot. Either go for the attack with the sleep cursed fairy and the motor vault. That would bring the opponent down to 4 life. Or keep the mana open so I could play the Mystical Dispute or the Brassen Borrower in this opponent's turn. 
and I feel this is the right decision. I could also play Mystical Dispute in Pity Theft in the same turn, so we are just going to attack with the Sleep Crest Fairy only, and then pass the turn. Otherworldly gaze. Yeah, at this point I just need luck, because if the opponent finds his third phoenix, it's pretty much over. Thoughtsies brings me in a really tough spot here. I won't be able to handle both phoenixes when I play my Brassenborough now. Or I might just need luck again. I really can't imagine something I could draw that enables me to attack for 6 in the next turn, handling both phoenixes at the same time. I still feel like bringing out the Brassenborough is the best move I have right now. Opponent takes away my fairy fencing. Well, Brassenborough is a great draw here. Brassenborough is the best draw here. We can pity theft one of the phoenixes away, and if we attack with the motor vault, um, the opponent is only able to block 3 damage, so 5 still go through. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't board out too many Brassenborough. Mystical Dispute is of course really bad for us here. But we still do have our own, but that means this turn will not be lethal. I somehow have to get rid of the last 4 life, so of course I attack. With only one phoenix in the grave, the opponent is not able to block the Brassenborough and the Motor Vault. So I have to admit, Pity Theft is a really great card in this matchup.
I have played enough matches to know that this hand is not going to win the game. I really need the pressure from one of the Sleep Cursed Fairies or something like that. So, even if it doesn't look like it, this is a mulligan. This is really a bad hand. There is only one mana color in it, so definitely a mulligan again. But um, the mulligans become a lot stronger now that we have Leyline of the Void. And slowly but steady, this is becoming the worst case of mulligans. So at this point, I'm just going to mulligan on Leyline of the Void. Now this is finally something I can work with. Turn 0, Leyline of the Void, turn 1, Sleep Cursed Fairy. This is a hand that can win a game against Phoenix. Mulligan to 3 is <laughs> so stupid. So while we are at it, I want to show you the numbers. Frank Karsten did a great article about it. So these are the probabilities to draw a ley line in relation to the number of mulligans I am willing to take. And as you can see, our mulligan wasn't exactly the normal case. It was really bad luck. But I really don't feel bad for taking so many mulligans because I know this deck and I know that it wouldn't have been great for me to keep a mediocre 7. The more mulligans I take, um, the more aggressive I want to play. That's why I start with Thoughtseize. But I think um, playing the Sleep Cursed first, so she loses her stun counters, would be the more aggressive play. Also, if my opponent would have had a thought seize, he could rip the sleep curse out of my hand. That would have been the worst case. So, I think sleep cursed fairy in turn one would be the better play here. Rinke is, of course, not the best draw here. All I can do is play the Sleep Cursed. Opponent frees some fairies in response, but I know they don't have many fairies in their deck. Okay, theory crafting. If my opponent would have had a mystical dispute, they could have countered the Sleep Cursed fairy. So let's consider it a misplay to not play her in turn one. I'm very happy to draw another Sleep Cursed Fairy here. With only one mana, this is one of the best draws we can have here. And there comes the Thoughtseize. Takes away the Rinker. It's really good that this deck plays so many one drops. Like um, Fairy Dream Thief into Fatal Push. With only one mana, I can work with that. My opponent is freeing all the fairies. Well, um, Picklock Prankster isn't too bad for us here. Because uh, as a 1 3, most of our fairies are able to kill.
Well, against Thoughtseize, sadly, we have to waste the Fatal Push against a big lock prankster here. I would have gladly saved the Fatal Push against something like a Ledger Shredder here. Yeah, this is why I have let him discard the Fatal Push. It's just too easy to make a murder out of this thing and he's able to kill one of my sleep curses here. With another mana I'm finally able to untap the sleep curse fairy a little bit earlier. Yeah, this is a great statement in turn 6. We definitely have to block the Hall of Storm Giants. Yeah, the Hall of Storm Giants is breaking it now. For a moment this felt possible to win, but I don't think uh, I have a reasonable plan against the Hall of Storm Giants here. This is now the only time I can take the damage from the hall. After that I have to draw something like Muta Vault or another Dream Thief. At this point, even if I find an answer to the Hall of Storm Giants, um, the Picklock Pringsters will kill me. I can still attack. Untap the Sleep Cursed, kill one of the pranksters with fairy fencing, but I don't see an out here. The opponent blocks, so that could indeed give me another round. Now we can kill the picklock prankster with the fairy fencing and block the hall of storm giants with the sleep cursed. I really like the Brassenborough, but 
he's not going to change the outcome of this match here. So let's just concede. Well, for a mulligan to three, this was really close. So I hope you had fun watching. And as always, have a great day.